This is the Soul Androids podcast. I'm Jake. I'm Colin. I'm Marley. And I'm Zoner. See, it works. If Zoner's here and Zach's not, we still have a Z to go last. Yeah. <laughs> I not, know my not place. That you're, replacing, so. you're not replacing Zach in our hearts, but, um, you know, you can never you're our Zach in my heart. Yeah, that's right. You're our substitute no. Z for the night. No one can, Colin. No one. <laughs> <laughs> you you only get one soulmate like Zach. So yeah, my wife, you know. It. Yeah, and that's good. That's good. <laughs> <laughs> well, how are you all doing? Awesome. Just you know. getting by, you know. Woo. I should translate that for his honor. How y'all doing? <laughs> no. That's my best y'all. It, all it's y'all. plural, so it's how all y'all doing. Oh, I'm not fluent. I'm not fluent in y'all, so I should. I'll study up on that. I wonder if Duolingo has has, has something southern. For that. Yeah, has, has southern speak. We yeah. hope Zoner well, makes it through the night with us on the recording. He's right in the middle of a tornado, or one's coming. Possibly. Well, I. I don't think tornado is fixing to drop on us, but see, I dropped the fixing. So yeah, that I was did good. that. For, I did that for you, Jake. I appreciate uh, that. Thank you. <laughs> but no, it's we've got we've got a pretty awesome thunderstorm on, coming. You know, it's just honor. It's me. Wow, wow. You two <laughs> like to just kill each other off. That's what I've decided. You know, yep. and we got feedback saying that. You should just let traditions fly. Yeah. Jake's well, a Colin listen, death denier. Listen, <laughs> I know when I was called a villain, I was listen, called a Linda. villain, in fact, for denying it. But let me just really? say that. <laughs> yeah, I am not one that does traditions just for tradition's sake. I like Colin. I don't want him to die. I don't want him to be. Di- I don't want Zach to die. I want them I mean, both to be here. Here's the thing, though. You broke a six year streak. Yeah. It's a new stolen droids. It's a new stolen droids. A new sheriff is in town. You guys better just get used to it. Oh, Oh, dang. (laughs) Whether you feast on blue or not, you better just get used to it. And you know who you are. I know. All right. uh, Laying down the law. Jumping Jake Flash. Jumping Jake Flash. Laying down the law. That's right. Um, So Jake Flash with a new mustache. Jake Flash with a mustache. I like that. That works. Yeah. This what, mustache, what's that? Do you want me, to explain me, that to us? Let me explain this because it it needs some explaining. Um, it looks really gross right now. Uh, and according to my wife, it will never not look gross. So we'll oh. go with that. Not me, but just the mustache that she's not a fan of. Mm-hmm. Me, she says she's still a fan of. So fingers crossed. Um, but I can't grow a beard. Uh, where I work, we can't have beards and um, we still do video meetings. And so I can't grow a quarantine beard, but I can grow a mustache uh, within the rules and the guidelines. And so that's, that's what this is about. This is my quarant- quarantine stash. So we'll see uh, how long it lasts after that. I like it. I think, well, right now I don't, I think right now it looks really gross. It looks like a 13 year old trying to grow a mustache. But <laughs> or you just like. Out. Drink some chocolate milk or something. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. The nice thing is as it grows in and I do things like drink chocolate milk or eat soup, I can save some for later. It, it'll be really nice. When I used to have a beard, I would, that was one thing I enjoyed was the snacks that I would have later. <laughs> no. Anyway, so that's, you it's know, a my wife, stash. my wife feels the same way about my beard as yours does about your mustache. But I actually used to work at the same place that you do. Mm -hmm. And while I was there, I had a mustache as well. And they were constantly getting mad at me because I would press the limits on that. And I'd have it go down too far below the corners of my mouth. And they would get so angry with me because of the fact that it was not regulation. It was too long. I was looking like a hippie. It's like, yep. come on, yo. And and I'm the type because I, you know, I don't believe in tradition for tradition's sake, which we just talked about a few minutes ago, that if they give me a hard time for that, I'm just going to shave off the size and just leave a little bit in the middle. Do it. 
in you should Seattle. do that anyways i no, think that would be no, a good you look should, on you no one should that's not a good look on anybody that look <laughs> has been ruined from now <laughs> until the end of time i i, I think, think that would be a great look on you yeah and maybe you could wear like a military uniform all the time I, you'd look awesome people would respect that it's always so fun to have you on the show's honor and the directions you take us down <laughs> in the rabbit holes we end up in. Let's just move forward. Let's um, just call that the JoJo home. rabbit hole. That was the JoJo bomb. rabbit hole. I thought that for a second and I just kept going. Um, so I've been watching this show on Disney plus uh, they, they kind of came out with a round of new releases um, over the last week or so. I think since the beginning of May, um, the gallery that is kind of the behind the scenes look of the Mandalorian, uh, dropped on Monday, May the 4th, obviously, uh, along with rise of Skywalker, which is now on Disney plus. Um, but they also dropped this show called prop culture and in a very un Disney plus like way, they dropped all the episodes of season one at once, which was kind of fun because you could binge watch it. Um, and it is, if you guys haven't seen it, it is a show hosted by a guy who gives me hope that I might too someday be famous and host a TV show like this because he is not what you would call your traditional Hollywood good look guy. Anyway, he's very much like me built similarly. Um, I don't know, man, that mustache though. It's like 1940s class right there. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. I'm dig I'm digging it. And yeah. I'm sincere when I say that. I appreciate that. Anyway, thank you. Prop culture is a cool show, though. It is this guy collects props from movies, uh, and he, uh, with the resources of Disney now behind him, gets to kind of look at some of these classic props from classic uh, movies uh, that Disney has done. Or I would say most of the movies that they're talking about are classics. Um, some of the movies that they discuss are like Mary Poppins. Like that's the first episode is Mary Poppins. Um, and uh, they go to like, they talk about nightmare before Christmas and they show some of the puppets and some of the sculptures that they had for that. Um, they do uh, honey. I shrunk the kids, which was a lot of fun uh, for them to talk about. Cause it made me want to go back and watch that movie. Cause I haven't watched it in years. And I love that movie when it came out um, Chronicles of Narnia. And so all these different movies and they bring up these props and everything. And the guy that's on there, he collects props. That's how he got into this. And he, he restores them. And it got me thinking, what are some of the things that I collect? It seems like a big part of being a nerd or a geek is collecting stuff. I mean, I don't know of anybody um, in my circle of friends who are, who are geeks that doesn't collect something. Um, and so I kind of thought it might be interesting for us to talk about some of the things that we collect and, and why we've landed on those different things that we do collect. So that was the impetus to the show. I got to say, Jake, that is an awesome show. Uh, I, I watched the uh, Mary Poppins episode. I mm -hmm. haven't seen any of the others, but holy crap, that is a fun show. I love yeah. stuff like that. And it's, you know, I like shows like American Pickers and uh, even Pawn Stars where you get to see cool things from the past, you know, that may have you know, some sort of cultural significance. Really, what's more cultural, culturally significant than Mary Poppins? I mean, yeah, that is just a, that's an, what the heck is that waving in? Oh, it's a cat. <laughs> it's, um, <laughs> it's just my cat coming into the camera. <laughs> you see, I just see this tail like going, 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 going. <laughs> but okay, never mind. Sorry. Um, that was distracting. Like yeah, we see somebody waving behind Marley. We always know it's the cat. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but, I mean, I love being able to see shows like that. And I remember Steve Sansweet did a, a tour, I think, on, I think it was on History Channel a few years ago, where he gave a tour of Rancho Obi-Wan and mm -hmm. showed off his, basically, the museum that he's built in his backyard, which is freaking amazing. And so seeing Disney do something like this with with their memorabilia and and their props and stuff is awesome. Yeah. And this is a, a you're exactly right. Geeks collect. That's what we do. I have 
and and having an incomplete anything is really frustrating for geeks. I've got a DVD. I've got a bunch of DVDs. I think I have seasons like one through five or one through six of the Big Bang Theory. And because it's not complete, it really bothers me. So I just had to stick them all in a box uh, because I can't handle looking at them unless I go and buy the rest because it's incomplete stuff like that it's yeah it's so you're you're a completionist then yeah i'm not as bad as i used to be but yeah, yeah. some things I, I am i i think naturally i am but collecting comics and then funko pops has broken me of that habit because yes. you can just there's just so much of it and you just there's, can't yeah. you will never off. be complete never yeah yeah Yep, and that's I agree. that's the hard thing. You'll never be complete. Well, thank you, Marley. Uh, <laughs> no, I, under, show, I, I was understand. Say, the other hosts on this show, you guys complete me, but according to Marley, I'll never be complete. No, so I'll just go my corner and cry now. Don't worry about so it. Bad. No, it's just I understand the pain yeah. because, like, on my list of things I collect uh, are um comic books and Funko Pops and there no there's way too many like I mean sure you could just like I think that both of those things are like lifelong collections yeah. that you just over time just keep adding to it adding to it you know because it's just it's never gonna end and that not that that's a bad thing at all mm-hmm. yeah well, well there's I'm within you know some of those uh Funko Pop series where you know, you really like two of them, but the rest of the series you can, you just feel like you can do without. Yeah. yeah. See, that doesn't make sense to me at all. Really? Like I really? can't just look and say, Oh, there's two there and I can just do without the rest. I've like, I've trained myself to not go by the whole set, but it's really hard for me to look at it and be like, ah, I, I only need like Lord of the Rings, for example, as they've come out with Lord of the Rings, Funko pops. It's like, well, I mean, really, I only need Frodo <laughs> and Sam. Except Mary and Pippin are also really cool. And I mean, you can't have Mary and Pippin without Legolas and Gimli. And what would the point be without Aragorn? And you got to have Gandalf. And you see how this, this is how my mind works when I look at it is it's, yes, there are probably the ones that draw me to a collection. But then once I start collecting, then I feel like I need all of them. And so I've had to train myself to not buy all of them. Mainly because financially we would not succeed as a family if I bought all of them. <laughs> That's why I haven't bought any of the it's office Funkos. Kids. Yeah. What's that, Colin? Just sell a couple kids. <laughs> you know, and in this economy right now, they don't go for the same rate that they used to. Ah, oh, man. Um, <laughs> well, that's the, that's the hard thing, Zoner. I, I've looked at um, the Parks and Rec uh, Funko Pops that are out yep. there. Like, I want a Ron Swanson, but I'm like, but I would Ron love a Ron Swanson. His, his best workplace or work proximity associate, uh, Leslie Nope. And I can't have Leslie without Ben Wyatt. And this is the problem in my head. This is how my mind yep. works. <laughs> yep. I, I'm the same way. I'm the same way. In fact, I've got a ton of Funkos uh, that. I, I mean, you can see some of what I've got behind me, uh, but I mean, I've got a wall over here that you can't really see. You can see like a sign and stuff, but I've got Funkos mm-hmm. on that wall and I've got Funkos on the wall over here, but um, I've got like four boxes, like big boxes of Funko Pops out in my mm-hmm. garage that I just don't have room to display or do anything with. That's so and sad. It it's terrible. It's tragic, is what it is. Yeah, and it's gotten to the point that he comes to me and he's just like, "Can you order this? Because I don't want my wife to know." Wow. <laughs> you know, I've gotten to the point where I just like, like I ordered. Um, what did I order the other day? I ordered a child Funko, and I got that the other day. Oh, and I ordered a Clark Kent Funko, like the. Um, like the child from the Mandalorian, not like just a random Funko pop. Yeah, child. yeah, we're not talking like Boss Baby here. It's it's Ugh. yeah, Baby Yoda. <laughs> Ugh, that that would be creepy. Baby eh? Yoda. Uh, but no, I got me a Baby Yoda Funko, and <laughs> so 
I, I have to share this with you guys. I'm not going to show the picture because we try to keep it PG-13. Someone just texted me a picture. You guys, with masks, you've heard the comparison that it's like peeing, you know, and if somebody's running around yeah. and peeing on oh, yeah. everything. And, but if you're both wearing masks, then it's like you're both wearing pants. Um, I just got texted a picture, and I'm trying really hard not to laugh on the air here as we record. But have you seen people wearing the mask and like the nose is sticking out over the top? Yeah. Yes. So this picture is now taking the, the peeing comparison of a mask and underwear to the next level of like something else poking out over the top of underwear is what it's like when your nose is poking out over the top of your mask. Oh no. Um, <laughs> and it is hilarious. And so I, this text comes through and it's just a picture and that's what you saw me passing over to Erica, who's sitting here working on her blog stuff, and I'm trying not to laugh. So, but I wanted to share that with you. Thank so, you. what you're saying is somebody just sent you an unsolicited dick pic? Yes, but it, this one I'm okay with. <laughs> really funny. This one was funny, um, and and only because we went, we were out somewhere, and someone an employee was wearing a mask and they had, it was the same thing. I've seen that multiple times where like the mouth is covered, but the nose is hanging out. And I'm thinking it's you, uh, anyway. So sorry, that was a sidetrack, <laughs> but I wanted you guys to know what I was passing around over here is, as you can see, um, at least it wasn't a fatty. <laughs> so <laughs> Funko pops. this is an important question because it seems like we all collect pops in the group here do you guys keep them in the box or do you take them out of the box I, take I, love, I love Marley's reaction right off the bat like no no I take them right out of the box like I, I want them out on my shelf like I I have you can kind of see in my background here like I have them all just kind of lined up all nice and, and cute what about you Zoner Colin um, I keep the boxes Okay. Because they go back into the boxes quite nicely. But I actually have, uh, for the longest time, I kept them in the boxes. I have a few that I keep in. Oh, whoops. I've got a few <laughs> that I keep in the boxes. Um, they're like, oh, crap. You can see I've got a few here that are like still in the boxes. Because oh, those yeah. are like multi hundred dollar ones. Um, oh, wow. Yeah. Yeah. And then um, we are going to have to put like, like a but, tell everybody to take Dramamine before they watch this episode between yeah. your camera works on her and yours calling going off at the same time. <laughs> it is, it is not pleasant. I'm just saying, <laughs> but yeah. And I, then, I, yeah. I mean, you can see all, all of mine are like mostly out of the box, but I, I discovered years ago and this was due primarily. I, I am a Star Wars toy collector. I love Star Wars. I've always been the dude. I was the kid who every year at Christmas would ask Santa for the entire collection of Star Wars. And uh -huh. the fat man never brought me anything. Um, so as an adult, I compensated and mm -hmm. I have a lot of Star Wars toys. But... I realized that they take up a lot of space if they're all in the packaging. Yeah. And that's true. the more offspring that started coming out, uh, the less room <laughs> I had. And so Could you find a more weird way to say that the more offspring that kept coming out. <laughs> I, I ran out of space to display my stuff. And so there was, I remember there was a, it was a Sunday afternoon. I went through and I opened up, like, I probably opened up for, uh, I don't know, four or five hours, Star Wars toys and took stuff out of the packages. There, there's a, there's a Star Wars collector out there right now, just cringing as you tell the story. Uh -huh. Like, I can't believe you opened those up. You can I tell you, I'm cringing as I'm thinking about it, but it was all prequel era stuff. So it's not like it was, you know, stuff from my childhood. So it's not like I just opened up a, a vintage Death Star that's worth thousands of dollars. 
So I, I feel like uh, he's saying it, it was all prequel yeah. era stuff. What he's really saying is it's secret code for it was all Jar Jar Binks stuff. Like he's got an extensive Jar Jar Binks collection. I could see it. Yeah. It's it's what we it's on the wall that he's facing right now, so we can't see it yeah, in the camera. The shell of Jar Jar Binks <laughs> memorabilia. Um, I will save you the hassle of getting nauseated as I whip the camera around there. Uh, <laughs> there's nothing on that. There's nothing on that wall yet. Okay. Okay, Zonner. Okay, shrine in a closet of Jar Jar. Yeah. Yes. We, that, ha we that have an eyewitness in my bedroom. It's in my bedroom. <laughs> <laughs> it has candles. So, so and, Zonner, and it I'm at best. Like if you are listening, come on our show. Let's talk. Oh yeah, absolutely. <laughs> I joke about Jar Jar. I think obviously the actor who played him, he did awesome. Um, and did exactly what he was supposed to do. And no one yep. should give any hate to any actor in any movie because they're just like, if you don't like the way a character is portrayed or written or anything like that, that's on the director and the writers, not the actors. They get paid right. to perform and that's what they do. I uh, agree. So Zoner, it sounds like you're more of an in the box kind of a guy, even though you've taken things out. Like the fact that you saved the boxes, like to someday put them back in the boxes. Uh, they the store Pop. really nicely in the box. Like when I move, yeah. I don't want to stick all my Funkos in just like a big box and have them get all dinged up and the paint yeah. chipped on one another and stuff. So that's mainly why I save the boxes is all for my, like all I, my I mean, boxes. I keep under uh, in yeah. my cabinets here. I, I do keep yeah. my boxes too. I have a box for the boxes. Wow. Yeah. So you guys all keep the box. I'm not a keep the box kind of person when it comes to Funko Pops. I take them out, throw the box away. Usually that's true. There's one that I've kind of hung on to, uh, my giant Indiana Jones one. Although I think we finally got rid of it. Did we get rid of it or is it still? No, nope, it's still upstairs. But yeah, this guy here and his box was really cool. And so I kept it. But eventually I'll probably get rid of it because I don't know what I'm going to do with it. I'm not going to put them back in anytime soon. So. You know, if it uh, if it wasn't for the stash right now, you would look just like that Funko. <laughs> you just need the fedora, dude. Next time, next time we go to Disneyland, I'll get the fedora. Do Maybe. it, sweet. Um, but um, yeah, and I've always been. Like, even when I collected comic books heavily as a kid, I was always, like, my friends were always trying to put it in their little plastic bags and keep them all safe and nice. And they're like, they would buy it. I had a friend who, he would buy one issue that he would collect and then the other issue that he would read. Um, the same issue, but he would just buy two copies of it. I was always one like, no, I buy the comics to read them. And I grew up in the 90s when the comic book publishers were trying to push valuable collectible comics on us but there were all so many of them out there yeah there were so many of them out there that they didn't have any value um the age of number ones where they would just throw out a number one just so you'd go out and buy it um i remember the death of superman when that happened and wanting to get the black cellophane packaged uh death of superman with the red s on it and like for a while that was like this super valuable comic you couldn't you couldn't get it for less than like five or six hundred bucks and then superman came back to life and then it like lost all of its value and now you can find it no no problem what do you have there's honor speaking of he didn't hear me hair. ask what he had there so he's just gonna i did oh you did all i right. did see so so you've got it framed i've got, well and thing. i uh, yes and i i'm actually waiting for some good comic book frames for it. Um, yeah. But yeah, autographed by Mike Carlin, who was the editor in chief of Superman comics at the time. So there's the black bag issue. And I yeah. also have the newsstand copy. So yeah, good times. Wow. That's got really also cool. autographed. Yeah. It, and that was the funny thing with comics in the nineties. That was what they were all about was creating this event 
that would make you want to go out and buy it to drive up because that's when people started to realize that there could be value in collecting comics. That's when like action comics, number one really gained in value. And um, people started looking at comic books from the sixties as investments instead of just what they read and, and probably threw away. And so they thought, well, now if we buy the comics now, 30 years from now, they'll be super valuable. And for the most part that has not panned out because the market was just flooded with those issues. Like everybody had a lot of those issues that were, were a big deal. So, well, and the thing is they, like you said, the market was so saturated and everybody it's like with, it's like with baseball cards. I was a big mm-hmm. baseball card collector as a kid and the market or the, the manufacturers kind of killed themselves because they flooded the market with all these allegedly ultra rare cards Mm -hmm. and you you know, whatever else it was they were peddling and everybody thought, Oh, well, Mickey Mantle's rookie card is worth this much money. If I save all these cards from 1988, you know, Jose Canseco's rookie card from 1986, 86 is going to put my kid through college. No, it's not because there's a million, a million of them and everybody's saving them. The the thing that made the ones from the fifties and sixties and even some of the seventies stuff. So valuable is scarcity. It's demand. Nobody collected them. Nobody collected comics in the thirties and the forties. They just bought them and read them. Yeah. And then mom threw them out. And yep. that's how it went. Mm-hmm. Um, so I I agree. So it's what- crazy. It's crazy how um like how much some of those comics are worth though too. Oh, yeah. Like like last year I um so it wasn't actually until about a year ago that I first started collecting and even reading comic books. You guys like I never read comic books when I was younger. But last year, some friends and I, we took a road trip to Denver and visited Mile High Comics, which I don't know if you guys are familiar with that, but it's like a huge, huge warehouse full of comic books. And it's amazing. And I just had to, I had to buy some, like, of course, but we were kind of looking at some of the ones that are like behind glass that you like all these collectors ones. I think the most, one of the most expensive ones they had it was a it was a Green Lantern, mm-hmm. and it was like I want to say it was like forty thousand dollars or something like that. Wow! And they had, of course, they had like some other ones. Um, of course, they had like a, a few Superman ones that were like way way pricey. But it's just crazy how like this little tiny thin issue of a comic book can be worth so much. Yeah, I think it's incredible. Well, and. and- and really there's a lot that drives that up. Like we talked about the scarcity is, is a big part of it. And also whatever's happening in the comic. I mean, there were a ton of Superman comics from the forties, but they're not all the same value as action comics. Number one, because that's such a pivotal, like that's the first appearance of Superman. And that's really where superheroes started to become a thing was with Superman or like you mentioned green lantern. There's a great green arrow, green lantern book. I think, um, I think it was green arrow green lantern but it's green arrow for sure and it's the one where speedy's doing drugs and like that oh yeah that neil adams cover yeah the neil adams cover which is you know it was such a it's not a topic that you saw in comics all the time and so that makes it stand out and especially at the time that it came out and and just different things like that like there's a uh the hulk issue that wolverine appears in uh, for the first time and um things like that so that's why it's so hard to know when you're buying a comic that this is going to gain value because you don't know how scarce it's going to be. And nowadays everybody who buys comics almost takes pretty good care of them and they collect them. Mm -hmm. And you don't know that it's going to be one of those impactful, meaningful stories. I mean, death of Superman is a great example. Everybody bought the death of Superman comics or wanted to buy the death of Superman comics because that was such a big deal. Superman dying was a huge deal until a year later when Superman came back to life. And then that lost its, 
its impact a little bit. And those, a lot of those issues went down in value as a result of that. Um, now I think they're still, they're probably pretty valuable just because they're hard to find, but <clears throat> yeah, it's You'd just be surprised. hard. To... <laughs> yeah. I mean, I remember back in the day, they were super expensive. And yeah. they're really, you can pick them up for relatively, relatively cheap. Now I remember the immediately after Superman 75, they went into the funeral for a friend storyline, mm -hmm. which I believe was a seven issue crossover I think so. uh, between the, uh, I think it was justice league and, and the Superman titles. Yeah, because there were like four Superman titles at the time. Yeah. And they, some of those books went into three printings, three or four printings, because a, nobody could keep them in stock. It was a big deal. And now, yeah, they're in dollar bins now. I mean, All right. Well, Zonder and I, we're going to nerd out about comic books in the 90s for a long time if you guys don't stop us. Oh, we so could. we should probably stop ourselves. <laughs> Let's nerd out about Legos. Oh. Lego. Let's talk Lego. I've got a couple of Lego. Let's see. Yeah, I, I see your Steamboat Willie up there, and I've yeah, got a Steamboat Willie behind me. Oh, this, nice. Yeah, this one, oh, man. Minnie just fell. But yeah, this one was, was probably my favorite one that. Oh, that's way cool. Um, it, it was, and when it, the wheels turn and the stacks go up and down. Um, anyway, it, it, this one was a lot of fun. Um, but as we've been quarantined, um, my, my wife, well, I'm talking and I realize the microphone's down here, even though my earphone is in my ear. Uh, but yeah. as we've been quarantined, my wife and I, that's one thing that we've done is, uh, to kind of pass the time as we've bought some Lego sets. Um, and that, that's one of them. We got like an X wing Hogwarts. You can kind of see behind my head there the clock tower and that's kind of become our addiction that we like to get to sit together and, and build Legos or Lego, not Legos, but yeah. What about you guys? You guys collect Lego at all? You know, we do a winter village. We buy the winter village sets every oh, nice. year and those things are flipping expensive once they get retired. Mm -hmm. But I saw something a few, and I've always been a big Lego nerd ever since I was a little kid. I've, I'm kind of a renaissance nerd when it comes to toys and collectibles. But uh, I saw something, it's probably been five or six years now, that Lego sets actually have held their value and, and performed better than the stock market has. Over wow. like the last 10 or 15 years, they've, they've increased in value more so than the stock market has. Oh. And if I look at some of the sets that I've purchased, just some of those winter village sets, this steamboat Willie set, once they retire that it's going to skyrocket, I think, because you've got Disney collectors, you've got Lego collectors, yeah. you have all these different people who want all these different things. The Lord of the Rings sets once they stopped producing those, my daughter was furious because she can't afford them anymore. And they're expensive. Well, and, and, and as you're talking about the increase in value, uh, it, it brings up a, a good question. Why do you guys collect what you collect? Because I think there's a lot of different motivations. Um, some people collect as an investment. Some people collect for uh, nostalgia reasons or uh, just because they think something is cool. So what drives you guys in your collections and, and what you collect? Um, uh, I, go ahead, Colin. Uh, I would have to say um, mainly either nostalgia or just the fact that I like to keep them around. Um, mm -hmm. I, I collect a lot of random technology. Uh, and so I've got like closets full of just random, really old school, like Mac computers um, I've got, you know, drones galore. Um, I've got this like really old classic kind of radio dial style TV. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, and I don't know, it just, 
I think they look cool. I like I like keeping part of that history. Um, <clears throat> but it's but it's never anything about like profitability or anything like that. Yeah, I'm I'm for me like I just like I pick a favorite character or like I have several several favorite characters from across many fandoms. But I if I like come across something like like a piece of art or a Funko Pop or a t-shirt or even a comic book, like I just I just gravitate towards those favorite characters of mine. And mm -hmm. um, I mean, as you can see behind oh this way, <laughs> this way behind me, like I have two Star Lord things. I, mm -hmm. Wow, this thing like being backwards is so weird. But I have two Star Lord things and I have two Baymax things like right there. And they're just different variations of the characters. And it's the artist's um, like rendition of them, you know, and I just I just think it's cool. And it's just something I want to add to my um, to my home just to, you know, make it look cool. And and also for me is um, like I'm big on aesthetics. I, I just like it to look nice. Um, like there's one, there's one artist that I came across at the uh, um, Salt Lake Fan X um, that kind of does more like portraits. Uh, like he does like digitally um, like these different portraits. I It's in the other room or else I'd show you guys, but like just how they're all like kind of uniform. Um, I have like five of them in a row and they're just like all these different like portraits of some of my favorite characters. And even though they're like not in the same movies or time periods or anything, but just because it's like from the same artist and they all mm -hmm. like kind of like they're, they match in such a way. Like, I just think like having it all together just like looks really nice. Um, Cause like I, I'm also, I'm also very into like interior design um, and so I like, I like things to look really nice. And like, even like behind me, like I'm trying to build a gallery wall with mm -hmm. all of like, with all my art. Nice. <laughs> <laughs> so, and like, I did it on purpose so that I could keep adding to it because I'm not, yeah. I'm not, I'm not done buying art. Like I, I love going to fan X and walking through artist alley and just seeing what, like, even if it's like somebody that I already like if it's already a character that I already have like a ton of like prints of, I'm like, Oh, that's a cool, like, I like that version. And so I'll just buy it. You know what I mean? Like, it's just, yeah. I pick my favorite characters and just kind of just run with it. So, that's, so artist, that's, yeah. Our artist alley at fan X is one of my favorite places to visit yes. just for that reason. The first fan X that uh, I participated in, I was actually a volunteer and spent a good portion of my time volunteering on uh, the vendor floor because that's the area that I was assigned to and just walking through there and seeing the artists out and I started buying that was my first foray into fine art purchases but anyway I love visiting with these local artists um, mm -hmm. that are selling these prints of characters that I love and if you look back here on the wall oh you yeah can't really see any of them, but those are those are the art uh the prints a lot of them that I bought at uh, fan X hanging on that wall back there. And I, and it's just cool. It's, mm -hmm. uh, it's just a fun thing to add. And, and out of the stuff that you can buy at fan X, it's relatively inexpensive. I mean, you can get usually the prints are around 10 to 15 bucks a piece, depending on what size you're getting. And that's not that expensive for something that's really cool. Um, and it's neat to talk to somebody who painted that or drew that uh, because you connect with them because that's a character that you love and you obviously share some kind of uh, passion for that character. Uh, so oh, yeah. I, I agree. I love the art. I think that's a great well, thing to collect. And when I went, um, so I don't know if you guys can tell, but this is a art of Green Arrow. And I, so I was planning on getting uh, Stephen Amell's uh, autograph at FanX. And I, I didn't want to use their like generic, like little, one that they just give you at the booth. Mm -hmm. And so mm -hmm. I went, I searched artist alley. I just walked and I'm like, I got to find a green arrow print that I love. And I'm going to, you know, I want him to sign this. Cause then I'll put this on my wall. And I did. And I found this really awesome um, version and had him sign it and everything. And there it is on my wall. <laughs> That's cool. I actually did something similar with Nathan Fillion. I've got <gasps> a, a 
print here from uh, somebody did a uh, Soldier of Fortune magazine cover of Nathan Fillion. Let me Ooh, see so if, cool. I can, uh, if I can find off topic, that. But if you guys haven't seen The Rookie yet with Nathan Fillion, it is fantastic and you should watch so. it. I don't know oh, if y'all cool. can see that there, but um, yeah, he signed that, and then the artist also signed it. So nice, so cool. And then yeah. that Ninja Turtle one next to it, uh, Kevin Eastman, uh, he did not do that, uh, but mm -hmm. he did sign it. Um, and the artist who did that piece of work also signed it. So oh, cool. Yeah, I've got I've got in my prints over there. I've got some that are just random artists that I really liked uh, just the print that they did. But I've also got a couple where uh, like, I've got a Neil Adams print uh, when he came to fan X a couple years ago. Um, and it's a, it's a cool one of, it was right after nine 11 and it's Superman and uncle Sam on there. Uh, and, and that one was a cool one that he signed. Uh, and then, um, so I've got a couple where the actual artists or well-known artist signed it instead of just a, a an artist that that maybe isn't yeah. well known yet hasn't been discovered. I don't want to say I don't want anything that like downplays the legitimacy of either artist. You know what I mean? Like mm -hmm. they just yeah. haven't been discovered. Yet. They're still really really good. So um, I've got a, art, I've got a Neil Adams print here somewhere, and I don't know where it's at now. I've got it. I just realized it's not in one. It is a Batman one. Of course. And I just realized it's not up on my wall. And I'm thinking, where the crap is it? How <laughs> dare you? So, I got to find that thing. It better not be out in the box with the Funko Pops that are like dejected. <laughs> it is not. Kidding. I, I'm very much, though, the, the same, um, Marley, I think, as, as what you were saying, where I, I really, I, I'm not necessarily out there looking to invest in what I'm collecting. It's more just, this is the kind of stuff that I like. And so <laughs> it means something to me. And that's what I've tried to do. I mentioned being a completionist before. And with my Funko pops, I've tried to narrow it down to like, this is something that means something to me. Like, um, you know, back here, I've got my Wayne and Garth, which are two of my favorite Funko pops because it's one of my favorite movies. It's a movie that I can put on anytime. And it just makes me happy, even though it's, the stupidest thing ever, but I don't care. I love it. It's and not so the stupidest thing ever, Jake. It is a classic piece of American cinema. I don't know that I'd call it a piece of cinema classic <laughs> or American <laughs> or otherwise, but it is, it is a fun movie and I enjoy it quite a bit. I would um, say and that, so, that in UHF are just true. Yeah. Oh, oh yeah. So, so I, I try to find the stuff like I, I've gone to fan X a number of times um, I think everyone I've been to every fan X. I, I did not go to the very first Salt Lake comic con, but every I mean, fan X I've gone. I've been to every single one fan X like, and Salt Lake. Yeah. I'm a weirdo like that. <laughs> yeah, the, the first one, the weekend that it was on, it just didn't work out and I wasn't able to go, but like everyone since then I've been, uh, and I love it, yeah. but I, I don't have a lot of celebrity autographs, but there's one that I spent money to get. And it was, it was this guy. I'll show you here. This is, this was the very first fan X that I went to. They had the star Trek, the next generation people there. And so Worf was always my favorite. And so I got very his nice, but very that's, nice. it's not like it's going to be worth a lot of money or anything someday, but for me, it's worth cool. something to you. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And, and that was a cool experience because he wasn't super busy at the time. Um, so I was able to just walk right up. It was, um, and, and because he wasn't busy, there wasn't a line. And so I could talk to him for a few minutes and, um, that would have been really cool if I hadn't been so overly starstruck that I had no idea what to say. My wife still kind of makes fun of me a little bit because I just tripped over everything that it's like, uh, thank you, Mr. Dorn. Uh, you know, it was almost a Wayne's world moment actually of we're not worthy, but which is we've like, all been there. That's exactly yeah. how it was in front of Jason David Frank. Oh, okay. Green Ranger. And to, it was to the point where he, he looks up at me. And he's like, are you okay? I was like, <laughs> yeah, 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 just, you know, <laughs> that's awesome. Yeah. Over here. For me, it was Peter Mayhew. 
I I couldn't even go up and talk with him. I yeah. was so overwhelmed. <clears throat> yeah. Yeah. I would I would like to think that now as I've done more like podcasting and I've uh, been out there more as far as speaking and presenting and things like that, done panels and everything. Cause the first fan X I went to, I hadn't done any blogging, hadn't done any podcasting, hadn't been on any panels or anything like that. Now that I've done all that, I would like to think that I would be more well-spoken in front of uh, Michael Dorn, but chances are I'd probably still be super starstruck. I still uh, made an idiot out of myself in front of EG Daily. So, I mean, yeah. The the following year, Jason David Frank came back and I actually interviewed him. It went a lot smoother than I thought it would have. Yeah. I think when I, uh, when I met Stephen Amell, when I was getting his autograph, I think I hugged him without asking. Like, because <laughs> I was so nervous. Consent is key, huh? Marley. Consent I know. Is well, like I saw everybody in line, like ahead of me doing it. And then like, so when it got to me and he was like being all nice, like, oh, hey, thanks, you know, and here, here you go and whatever. And I was like, thanks. And like, instead of being like, oh, can I get a hug? Cause he was just giving hugs like over the table. And I kind of just like went in for it. Like I didn't say anything. And then afterwards I was like, oh no. Oh no! Have I done? Yeah. <laughs> you assaulted I, the Green Arrow. It was worth it. it yeah. <laughs> he, he gave a nice hug over the table, so I'm not going to complain. There you go. Perfect. Um, <laughs> that's okay. It's not any worse <laughs> than the awkward photograph that I'm looking at right now. Uh, that movies like, that make us with Tom Holland. Oh yeah, I've seen yeah. this. Yeah, it's. I'm not going to show it. I'm sure that it's out there circulating. Uh, if you guys don't have a copy, I'm sure Val will send it to you so you can post it somewhere. But somehow yeah, my eyes just share it right now in a weird direction. What's that, Colin? You can find it and screen share it really quick if you'd like. No, I think we're good. <laughs> The, oh, 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 did we? Oh, I think we oh, lost Zoner. Oh, oh, no. Zoner just went up in the tornado. I hope he's okay. <laughs> he up in Oz. Man. Bye, Zoner. <laughs> we we so, joke. There was a pretty major storm heading his way, and he may have really lost connection of some sort. I'm sure he's okay, but uh, hopefully he is. But yeah. let's talk collectibles while he's surviving the storm. So I wanted to I wanted to say something about Funko Pops. So yes. like because I was about Funko. There there is. There really is. Um <clears throat> like I I was thinking about it. I'm like, why do I pick the Funko Pops that I do? And I I mean, one of the biggest, obviously, <clears throat> is because I like I pick a favorite character and I just go with it, you know? But then I started doing, then I just realized that I started um, I was picking a lot of different characters of, um, people that I've cosplayed before and kind of started kind of going that route. So like, I'm looking at my shelf over here and I can, I can seriously point out like five or six of them that I'm like, oh yeah, I've cosplayed like all of these. So like I have a Punisher, a Negan, uh, a Loki, a Star Lord. I have Agent Carter and, um, Irene Adler from Sherlock. I'm like, yeah, these are all on the shelf. But so I think that I like doing that too. Um, so my, I have some friends that um, I cosplay with usually uh, at FanX and we all like Funko Pops too. And so we like purposely go to all of the booths and search out the best priced ones because <laughs> they're all different prices. Yep. And we, and we search for our, our characters that we're like dressed up as oh, and cool. yeah. And it's, it's way fun. It just kind of has become a little bit of a tradition, but it's, it's fun. I really like doing it. So it's interesting because that kind of brings us um, in a way full circle. Cause we, I started by talking about prop culture and uh, the, the show. One of the things that was very interesting is they would bring sometimes the stars from the movies um, 
and reunite them with the props that they used in the movies. Ooh. And one of the things my wife commented on as we watched through it is every time they would pull out that prop or that costume, um, a lot of times the actor that interacted with it would, would say something along the lines of hello, old friend. And, and there was that, that connection there with that physical item. And I think, you know, as you're talking about, these are characters that you've cosplayed and you seek those characters out when you're buying a Funko pop at a convention, I think, and a lot of the stuff we've talked about, these are items and, and, um, things that we buy that connect us to a memory and connect us to something that's, that's deeper than just, Oh, this looks really cool. You know, my, my picture of Worf that signed like that connects me to something in my childhood that, that meant a lot to me, the Funko pops that you buy that are the characters that you've cosplayed the technology that Colin has that, uh, you know, re reminds him, I'm sure of when he used that technology, even though it might be outdated now, um, I think that that's really what draws us as collectors to these items is I connect with it. It reminds me of something. It means something to me, whether a moment in time or an experience that I had uh, and I want to remember it. And so that's why I, I buy what I buy. Um, I yeah, don't know. It, definitely. Um, definitely. So. I think you, I think you hit it right on the nose. <laughs> But we want to hear from our listeners and uh, viewers now that we're consistently going to be on YouTube and Facebook oh. now with our videos. Um, I noticed we, it doesn't matter. I was going to say something, but I'll say it off the air. But um, we want to hear from you. We want to hear what you collect. We want to hear why you collect what you collect. What's your favorite thing that you've collected? Um, let us know. You can comment below the video um, or you can email us. Uh, we've got an email address. I can never remember what it is. What is it again, Colin? Feedback at StolenDroids.com. Thank you. Just Feedback at StolenDroids.com. It is scrolling down at the bottom of the screen. Um, not, not to look too much behind the curtain. Yes, I know that it's scrolling there at the bottom of the screen. It's called a gimmick, folks. It's called like a running gag. See, that's why I ask Colin every time. It's a running gag on the show. Uh it's replacing an old one where we used to kill people off. Now we're just asking Colin for the email address. Um, but yeah, we, we definitely want to hear from you. Follow us on Facebook, follow us on Twitter. Um, we're on Instagram. Make sure you subscribe to our YouTube channel because we are going to be putting more videos up there, um, including this one. Um, but I'll go do that. What's that? <laughs> I'll go subscribe to our YouTube channel. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Jeez. We'll, we'll have a new subscriber. That'll be great. Um, even if it is Marley, but yeah, we, we appreciate your feedback. We want to know what you um, and we appreciate you listening. Um, thank you for joining us today. Uh, go and collect something, find something cool this week on Amazon or whatever, and just treat yourself, you know, treat yourself, treat yourself. It's, it's we're in the middle of quarantine. Treat yourself. It'll be fine. Um, and we'll see you next time. Thanks for listening. Bye. Hasta luego. Thanks guys. Hasta la pasta. My dad used to say hasta la pasta. I don't think that's a real thing. I don't think so. Probably not. This has been a Stolen Droid Media Production. It's a trap! <laughs> <laughs> I just... I don't know. <laughs> that was the best.